As a biology student, you can get by with a simple model of chemical bonding that explains very well what happens when atoms combine to form molecules and compounds. Just pretend that atoms have feelings and remember these two simple rules. The first rule is the octet rule, which we learned about in the context of drawing atoms. In terms of chemical bonding, what this means is that atoms are only happy when their outer orbitals are full. And let's review what the capacity is of those orbitals. The first orbital can hold up to two electrons, the second can hold up to eight, and the third also can hold up to eight electrons. Rule number two is this. If atoms are unhappy because their outer orbitals are incomplete, then what they'll do is they'll trade or share electrons with other atoms in such a way so that their orbitals do become complete. So for example, aluminum. It has three electrons in its outer orbital, making it an unhappy atom. What aluminum will do is it'll give those three electrons away to another atom, and that'll make aluminum happy. What I'm going to do now is show you a series of atoms, and I want you to mentally label them as either happy or unhappy. Hydrogen, lithium, carbon, helium, calcium, and neon. Pause the video, mentally label them, and hit play when you're ready to see the explanation. Hydrogen is unhappy because its outer shell is the first one, which has a capacity of two. With one electron, hydrogen's an unhappy atom. Lithium is unhappy because its outer orbital has a capacity of eight, and it only has one electron in that shell. Carbon is unhappy because its outer shell also has a capacity of eight, and it only has four electrons in that shell. Helium has an outer orbital with two electrons, and that's the first orbital, so helium is a happy atom. Calcium has two electrons in its outer shell, but that's the fourth orbital, and that makes calcium an unhappy atom. Neon has eight outer electrons in its second orbital. The capacity is eight. There are eight electrons there. Neon's a happy atom. So let's see how unhappy atoms can interact with other unhappy atoms in a way that fills their outer orbitals and makes them happy. We'll start by looking at a situation where atoms trade electrons with one another, and that results in a kind of bond that's called an ionic bond. And to study that, we're going to first look at the formation of table salt. Table salt's chemical name is sodium chloride. Its symbol is NaCl. Na is the symbol for the metal sodium. Cl is the symbol for the gas, chlorine. Sodium, Na, has 11 protons, 12 neutrons, and 11 electrons. If you draw out sodium's orbital structure following the octet rule, you'll see that it has two electrons in its first orbital, eight in its second orbital, which leaves one lone electron in the third orbital. That one lone electron makes sodium an unhappy atom. The easiest move would be for sodium to give away that lone electron, but it can't do it on its own. It's going to need some help. Here's chlorine. Chlorine has 17 protons, 18 neutrons, and 17 electrons. Using the octet rule to draw out chlorine's orbital structure, you can see that it has two electrons in the first orbital, eight in the second, and seven in the third. With seven electrons in that third orbital, chlorine is an unhappy atom. Its easiest move to achieve happiness would be to accept one electron, but who's it going to accept it from? You've probably anticipated that sodium and chlorine were made to be a couple. Here's how they interact to form sodium chloride, or table salt. First, sodium gives up its outer electron to chlorine. As a result, both sodium and chlorine have complete outer orbitals. Note that sodium has lost its outermost third electron orbital. This trade transforms both sodium and chlorine. Sodium, because it lost an electron, now has 10 electrons and 11 protons. Because it has one more positive charge than negative charge, its overall charge is positive. The name for a charged particle like this in chemistry is ion, and sodium is now a positively charged ion. The opposite is true for chlorine. It gained an electron and now has 18 electrons and 17 protons. This gives chlorine an overall charge of minus one. Chlorine is now a negatively charged ion. The difference in charges is the essence of the bond between sodium and chlorine. The expression opposites attract is completely true here. The sodium, with its positive charge, will stick to the chlorine with its negative charge, just like the opposite poles of a magnet attract each other. And this type of bond, 
where atoms trade electrons, creating charged particles that stick to one another because of their opposite charges, is called an ionic bond. Now, try and use your imagination to visualize and understand what must be going on inside a salt crystal. A salt crystal consists of billions of sodium and chloride ions. In this illustration, the green spheres represent chlorine ions. The purple spheres represent sodium ions. The whole thing is held together by ionic bonds. Here's a few more points about ionic bonding. Atoms will trade one, two, even three electrons to become ions as they go about trying to get their outer orbitals full, but they'll never trade more than that. So, for example, a magnesium atom will give up two electrons readily, making it into a magnesium ion. It won't accept six electrons to fill its outer shell. Fluorine, similarly, will accept one electron to become an ion. It won't give away seven. Point number two. It's not always two atoms that work as a couple to trade electrons to make each other happy. You can also have three atoms that trade electrons in a way so that they're all happy. This is what happens in the compound sodium sulfide, Na2S. The two sodium ions have each given up their outer electron, giving each one a plus one charge. These two electrons were accepted by a sulfur atom, which has now become a sulfur ion with a minus two charge. The opposite charges make up the ionic bond that holds this compound together. So, let's summarize the key ideas about how ionic bonds work. First, in ionic bonds, atoms trade electrons in order to fill their outer shells. Second, these trades create charged ions. Three, because opposites attract, positively charged ions will stick to negatively charged ones, just like how the north pole of one magnet will stick to the south pole of a second magnet. What I want you to do right now is head over to my website, sciencemusicvideos.com. What I have waiting for you there are flashcards, multiple choice quizzes, interactive readings, and what all of that is going to do is help you really get that information into your head so you can learn it well, and then go on to the fascinating biology that we're going to be encountering later on down the road. I also want to invite you to do something that I haven't invited you to do before, and that is to ask questions. You can leave questions in comments on YouTube, or you can leave questions at sciencemusicvideos.com. I will do my best to answer them. And if I find that many of you are asking the same question, that can be an inspiration for me to create a video that will directly address issues of confusion or issues of interest. Go to Science Music Videos, leave me comments, Thank you so much. I'll see you at the next video.